Come here. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the the not disturb is useless. I'm gonna just put airplane mode on this thing. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. I deleted everything except for apps I actually use, apps I actually need and, and that bring me joy or don't bring me joy, but I have to use them like Slack. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Confluence. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael. I'm Radek. And this is The Podcast. A sounding board for interesting ideas and insights. We discuss books you read and want to share with you. As well as technology and productivity, which is what we do by day, working on our app, Nosby. Or whatever else comes to Radek's mind. Exactly. <laughs> is is that the official intro now? <laughs> yeah, 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 you got it. You got it, man. You got it, man. Uh, so, uh, Radek, what's on your mind today? which won't be a follow-up to the last one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, just just FYI for all the listeners, we're just continuing recording from, for you, last week's episode. So we'll be recording for like two hours uh, today. So th- uh, be sure to listen to the past two episodes because that's relevant for today's discussions. And now let's go. Okay, so in the last episode we discovered how to design your perfect Instagram and Twitter moment. The combined Instagram and Twitter moment. Yeah, and handle notifications of many of the things that we do or we use. So we talked about Slack, Nosby, um, the Twitter, social media, um, Apple Watch activity, like all these things. And we, of course, got derailed a few times. Yeah, we got distracted in an episode about distractions. Great. Yeah, happens to the best of us. <laughs> okay, so uh, what's up today? So as I briefly mentioned last week, I mean today, but never mind. Uh, as I mentioned last week, last episode, I, when I started thinking about those notifications and distractions, I started simplifying a lot more things. So we talked about how I simplified notifications on, on my devices. But I was just in the mood for removing stuff, stuff I don't, I don't need anymore. Uh, I, so it started with like simple, silly things. Like I finally, after more than a year, I went through my cupboard full of clothes, mostly clothes I don't wear anymore because they're too big. Because oversized. I, yeah, they're oversized, right? And w- one of, one part of, of, of this cupboard, I've procrastinated for over a year to open. It collected a lot of dust and it was filled to the edges with oversized clothes, right? So it, it took me a while, but I, I went through all of that and I finally <laughs> got rid of, of clothes. I gave them uh, away or I threw them out depending on, on their, you know, their, their, their state and there's just less stuff. Like I, I, I've got rid of a lot of junk I've, I've hoarded, you know, all the boxes from hardware I don't even have anymore. Just, just stuff that collected and just appeared magically over the years, but I don't need anymore, right? And I, I'm I'm giving out some of my old paper books because why do I need those paper books, right? I'm only going to keep those which which bring me joy. Like uh, we're we're going to talk about Marie Kondo's um, uh, what's the name of the book? Unclutter Your Life. Yeah, and I I I, I haven't actually read it, but but one um, mental model I, that stuck in, in my mind from from that was like. When deciding um, kind of what to keep, uh, the question to ask yourself is, does it bring you joy, right? Yes, that's and correct. There's a few paper books which I'm probably never going to read again, but that bring me joy and a lot that, that don't. And I just, I'm just throwing out all of this old stuff I don't need, like selling my old headphones, like all of the all of the stuff I don't need. I, I got rid of a lot of apps that I, I, I don't use. I finally made the step of removing uh, Reader, the RSS app from my phone, because I've stopped doing RSS a long time ago because, again, it was just like too overwhelming, too much stuff. I could never keep up with it, right? I I, I mostly adopted your uh, your approach with your new iPad, which is, well, but kind of in, a, in reverse, which is I, I deleted everything except for apps I actually use, apps I actually 
need and and that bring me joy or don't bring me joy but i have to use them like slack uh, <laughs> hello confluence <laughs> yeah but but at the same time i i you know i would invest in in setup and automation so i i did spend you know extra time you know doing more things to simplify things uh in the future so i just you know a lot of things over time you just get get used to and stop questioning whether this is actually a good setup or not like whether this actually should be this complicated because you just learn the steps and you you do it this way yeah, right that's and true. so you know i started simplifying a lot of that even if if that takes more time at the beginning you know i want a simpler system in the end and i um finally decided to get rid of um all of my paper notebooks because i have my new ipad oh really so no paper notebooks now well almost i'm, I'm still in the process but 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 here's the thing over the last two years or so i i grew to like paper notebooks there's just something fun about the physicality of it the fact that you can um you know, take a pen and start sketching and use color and, and whatnot and, and not just, you know, type. Um, it, it just, I, I grew to really like it. But the problem is, oh, and, and sometimes even just handwriting instead of, you know, typing, even though I know it's faster. I just grew to like it. But here's the problem. The more I grew to like paper notebooks, the more I, the more of them I would have. And the more of them I would have, the more they would annoy me <laughs> because there was just too much, too many extra things lying on my desk. And I have to be lying on my desk because when I need them, I, I need them, right? I want to grab my, my design notebook or my development notebook or my this or my that, right? And when I would be traveling, like I, I either wouldn't bring them and sometimes I would you know, miss out or I would bring them. And then uh, we talked about it two months ago uh, as I... Uh, after I got back from a 10-day trip, I had a really, really um, heavy backpack and I weighed every single piece, every single item in that backpack after I got back because I was curious, like, where does this weight actually went? Like, what is so heavy inside? And those two paper notebooks, they were 700 grams, like really almost a kilogram, like yeah. one-tenth of everything I brought was those two paper notebooks. That's ridiculous, right? Why, why would I do that? Um, so... Um, um, I'm still exploring and trying to find a, a new balance, a new um, system. But um, with this new iPad, I just, I saw that that's good enough. I really like um, sketching on this iPad. Sure, I, I can't, I can't take it in my hand and, and like flip through the pages to like, it doesn't have the same kind of physicality of it. It, it doesn't have the, the texture paper has, but it's good enough. With this new hardware, the latency is pretty much non-existent. Like I can't perceive the latency of, of me drawing with the stylus on the screen, which makes it like, you know, for me, that's, that's good enough because I still have um, the good things about sketching something out or handwrite or, or whatever, but I actually live in the 21st century and have it stored digitally on this one device, one device that's small and light enough that I bring it everywhere with me if I have my, my backpack, right? And I don't need those extra paper notebooks that just collect dust and take up space and weight in my backpack and that, that make, make it more difficult for me to travel while still working. Yeah, I, I still... Um, so, for example, I have a paper notebook, uh, just one, and um, I, I use the paper notebook. Right now, I'm transitioning from one notebook to another. So, I'm just. Uh, so, what I'm doing is I, I did my quarterly offsite uh, two days ago, finally. Oh, finally. Um, and I did it when I was in Brussels. And uh, I did it uh, in a paper, paper notebook. It was so much fun to just, mm. you know, write things down on the paper notebook. Um, and then I, uh, I take pictures, I scan them to Evernote so, the, so that I have the digital versions of the, uh, of the quarterly offsites, which is really important to me. But th thanks to that fact, I could do it there 
I, I could really do an offsite. I, I could do it in a totally different place. Yeah. Uh, I was I was actually in a park um, uh, in Brussels mm. instead of you know being doing my quarterly offsite in my home office on my whiteboard, which is, which not, is not an, an offsite. Exactly, it's an insight, not an offsite. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so that was important. Um, but what I do is that. Later, when I and and I and I like to take notes, like you know, some ideas and you know, free thing of 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 paper and 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 just free drawing and everything. It's still lots of fun, and I still use it every, every now and then. But then later, I, I I give myself a day or two to review these notes, and then I put them in a mind map or in some kind of digital form, mm-hmm. um, because very often, like most of the things, is just useless or just like blah 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 or whatever. But then some of the you know important things I put them in a mind map or somewhere else to, to make sure that I, that they, they stick for later. So I do I do still find uh, find it useful to have a paper notebook, but just one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, but then other notes I take uh, as, as as you do uh, with the Apple Pencil on the on the on the iPad Pro. Um, like for example, when we have design fight. I have my, you know, the whole thing opened, and I draw, draw, draw there. I, I, I take my notes, uh, drawing, uh, on the on the iPad uh, every every design fight. So I have I have lots of them right now already there, and it's very useful for me because again, it, this is the free hand drawing. But then again, it's on the iPad; it's already there. Um, I have it with me, and so so it's uh, it's it's more useful. So the question would be also for me in the end if I continue having just one paper notebook or at some point I will also you know do the quarterly offsite also on my iPad just you know drawing there and and just completely discourage the I mean the discard the paper mm-hmm. yeah but but still what's what makes sense about your approach kind of the hybrid approach is you write but then you you digitize it so you don't have to you don't have to have multiple notebooks and you have to hold on to it like yeah what, what once it's it's filled uh you can f- you can throw it away because you know that. Yes. So that's that's still better than than what I did, right? All right. Here's the big thing I want I want to talk about today. Um, I've just I realized as I've been in this mood for simplifying things and getting rid of stuff that's not important anymore. I realized that over time I've hoarded not on the physical items and digital items but also habits and systems uh, and we talk a lot about those on the show right and over time I got pretty good at that at creating those uh, habits and, and and systems and and they they take many forms like sometimes it's it's just um, some reminder I have some task that's repeating that that w- when that happens I I don't know I I review my priority list, I, I, you know, look at the calendar and I make a note for the next day. That's, that, that's a shutdown routine and, and that's the weekly review and just a lot of small things uh, and pl- planning in, in the calendar and planning the next day, just a lot of small things that help me kind of go through life productively and not forget about things and not uh, kind of get in, in this state where I, I wake up and I go on to do the most, you know, the simplest, most compulsive thing instead of the thing that matters the most, right? Those those systems, those habits, um, they're they're great, they're important, but over time, as I've been developing, kind of uh, improving and developing new, new new habits, I I created a lot of those little systems that were good, that were useful, but they have an expiry date. Right, I I I've, I had, for example, like reminders in my systems that serve a purpose in making me learn a new thing, kind of reprogram my behavior, making me something do automatically, right? But then now, instead of simplifying my life by making it easier for me to remember, by making it easier for me to do the right thing, they just add unnecessary cognitive load to it, kind of annul another mental procedure to store another five minutes here, 10 minutes there on, on, on this kind of habit and that habit, another thing to check off uh, on the list, right? Or th- there are some systems that, that do have a purpose, but no longer serve it very well, right? So I started looking at all of that, like questioning it after a long time, 
rethinking it, simplifying it, only leaving those uh, that matter, right? And we've talked a lot about simplifying things and refocusing on the most important thing, like deliberately uh, focusing on what's essential about deep work, essentialism, about maybe. yeah, exactly about the essentialism, about the zero sum game on this show. Um, I remember there was a time around March to May, I think, 2016, uh, when uh, a lot of those ideas kind of we discovered or rediscovered, and we made a lot of changes. I know I, I made a lot of changes in in um, in my life and in, in my work and how I approach things and simplified the big things. But what I failed to realize is the impact of of small things, like small annoyances, small little extra habits, extra things to do, because there's a lot of them, right? And my kind of proactivity and the ability to internet intentionally focus on important things was hampered not by, you know, a few heavy blows that I did something fundamentally wrong, but it was like, you know, death by a thousand cuts, like a lot of small things that are just constantly repeating, but no longer actually serve a purpose that used to have a purpose, but no longer do. Okay. Can you give, give us some examples of, 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 of something that you just dropped or is it too personal? No, um, there's, there's plenty of examples I, I can share. So I started by going through um, my personal tasks at, uh, in Nosby. And I have a lot of those, like, like Nosby, like literally runs my life. There's like, without it, I would forget everything, right? <laughs> Just Same like, nothing would work if I didn't have a system to take note of things that, that matter. But it's just that, you know, the idea from GTD is that you have, GTD is getting things done for, for those that, that don't know. Uh, and one of the, the big ideas is you need a system uh, like Nosby or that may be, you know, a paper, um, you know, a, a stack of, of index cards in the original version or whatever. But you need this system um, so that, you don't have to trust your own brain to remember things and to stay on top of things. But whenever something that's relevant pops up uh, in your mind, you take a note of that, right? And you put it in the trusted system and you no longer have to do anything about it because you know that it won't get lost, that you'll get to it. But here's the problem. The problem is that once you start really doing that and it it becomes like like a really important system where you uh, that's you know where you actually put things, it's easy to go too far and add things that are necessary. I remember um, I believe it was an interview you did with Jason Fried, or maybe it was some other interview with J- Jason Fried. And when, but anyway, when when someone asked him about GTD, he said that he's skeptical about systems like GTD because having a system like that is like having a big bookshelf, right? And when you have a big bookshelf, you have to f- fill it with books because it it can't stay empty, right? You have a system for storing books, and so you'll just fill it with books until they no longer fit, right? Um, And so, um, for example, um, I would have lots of lists, like I would have a a project called errand slash shopping, right? And uh, whenever there there would be like something that popped up in mind, oh, I guess I should uh, take care of that, or I should buy this probably, that, that sounds useful. When I found something interesting online, I would take a note of that. Right, and I would put it there. But the problem is that over time, uh, lists like that grew kind of so tall that every week during my weekly review, as I would review them, instead of it being helpful that I stored things that like are in this kind of safe place, um, it would feel overwhelming to go through literally. Uh, about four or five hundred—I don't remember anymore. Um, four hundred or five hundred tasks I have in Nosby, 
Um, some of them are, are probably like half of them are, are, are work tasks. So maybe half of that, but still like a large number of tasks. And I would review that, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be drastic enough, brutal enough about cutting them out because it's like, oh, I might need that someday. But still the, the volume of that, reviewing that would be kind of really annoying. I totally can relate to that because, uh, I have too many projects right now on my project list in Nosby. And uh, and some of them are these useful projects that I was starting, you know, just to put some tasks there and, you know, <laughs> these kind of bookshelves. Where I put, where I, <laughs> new bookshelves where I put new books. So, yeah, the problem with the weekly review is that you want to go through the weekly review. And very often, because you want to go through the weekly review, at some point, you just, the decision fatigue get, kicks in and you stop making decisions you just stop deciding you uh, like at some point okay i'm you know i'm 60 percent you know through my project list it's like, like, let's just go through mm-hmm. to, to the finish line okay this is, i don't care anymore okay that's and and so so very often like at the end yeah. of your weekly review you're just fatigued you're physically yeah tired of deciding and you just don't want to decide anymore so i don't know how to fix this but maybe you know Every you know week, I should have like a, a task to just okay focus on this project now and just you know clean this project and then you know do the weekly review. I mean something like this. I don't know what what did you do to 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 get rid of all these things. So I adopted a new strategy for taking note of things in Nosby, and the strategy is if I'm like I you know something pops up to my mind. I take a note of that. If it's something I'm actually going to do in the next few days, that's fine, right? But if that's something that maybe someday I will do, or, you know, in, in this, let's stick to this example, my project errand slash shopping. If it's something maybe I will some, someday buy, then I will not keep it. If I don't do it within the next few days, I delete it. Because he, here's the thing. Most of these things are not something that you will forget or if you will forget that it's so important. Like uh, with, with a lot of tasks, like with, with, with the shopping list, right? Um, if I didn't do it within the, the next few days, then apparently it wasn't so important to me that I, I felt motivated to do whatever it takes, like whatever research or go to Amazon or whatever to actually get something. Apparently I don't desire it that much. I don't need it. So why why keep it? Why keep it on, on the list? The moment you want it again, you will remember it again. And you will take a note of it again or just buy it outright. But like, why keep a list of it? What's the point? So with with this list... There is a, a few things I did procrastinate on and, and actually just had to do it. So I, I just bought whatever I had to, to, to buy and, and, and left like literally like three or four things, uh, you know, to be done within the next week. And I would only keep the things as a backlog uh, that have extra information. So if I've already done some research about X, and, you know, when, you know, it, it's it's not urgent, I don't need it right now, but when I, I do need it, I have the note, right? I, I won't have to do extra work because I already noted whatever I've already discovered. So so that that is fine. But like, why keep things that when they become important to you, you will remember? Why take a note of that, right? Like there's a, there were a lot of things, especially in my personal projects, which were like, oh, that's a good idea. I'll take a note of that. But if, if you haven't done it, then, you know, apparently it's not that important. And then I, I think I think long backlogs of just random ideas are fine, but only if you separate them completely. So I have a few pro- projects that are just are just that. Like there's one project related to um, the, the iOS, Mac, Apple Watch apps for Nosby. It's called, um, it's just called I- iNosby some, Someday Maybe. And... There's just a bunch of stuff which I don't have time or energy to do anytime soon, but are, are good ideas. And so I just put it there. But it's a project I never look at, not even during weekly re- review. 
It's just a, 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 a long list of things. It's, it's the basement. It's, it's the place you go in once a year when you're looking for something specific or you remember something. And I, I think that's, that's something that's useful because maybe one day comes that I will have more time for those projects or we will hire a new person and suddenly you know, I'll need tasks to give to that, to that person. Then that might become useful. Or I'll, you know, I found useful pieces of information that it will be difficult to find later. That's fine. But like completely separate place. Um, but within most of, of my projects, just prune it, um, you know, very brutally. And I, I, I took a note of, of some kind of heuristics I, I, I used to simplify that list. First of all, is it still important? Do I still care? That there are things which I took, took note of because they, they, they serve some purpose that I had, some goal I had, but that's, that's not really that important to me anymore. So I would remove that because when it becomes important to me again, I'll remember that, right? Um, is it still relevant? Can I do just fine without it? So there are some reminders that I have that were part of like my habit building process, but that I actually don't need anymore because it just became automatic. And the fact that I would have an extra notification from reminders or another thing to check off in Nosby would just be draining. I would keep it because, you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't question that maybe I should remove it because it made sense, it, it was important, but it's no longer relevant, right? Also, do I already have it somewhere else? So I wouldn't allow duplication of things unless while honing um, a new habit. So for example, I would, I would have a reminder in Nosby um, to hit the gym on Saturday morning because, you know, I put everything in Nosby and so why not? But I already put in the calendar that I have the gym and it already sends me a notification Right, and there were a lot of those things which I just never questioned that they they have like duplicate systems for me to right. to remember about them, and that's just not necessary. Uh, another is, is it the right place for this? So, again, same example: uh, the gym, events in calendar, tasks in Nosby. So, I had a bunch of things in Nosby which mostly served as as um, just reminders. And I, I would I would move them kind of to different places so that you know it's kind of separate that it's it's the right place for this. Um, can I automate this? Uh, so for example, I had a repeating task um, to uh, pay taxes and to uh, kind of charge my phone and a bunch of other things. And I was like, hey, wait a second. I can actually make it automatic. And I just, it became a habit. I had a system so that I don't forget about it. I never questioned that I could make it even simpler, like like something I don't have to think about if I automate this. So I did, right? Um, can I delegate this? So that's, you know, that's difficult to do with, with personal tasks, but uh, in in Nosby at work, there were some, some, some tasks that I realized actually... Uh, actually, I shouldn't be doing this. And I, I just gave them to someone else, right? With reminders, um, do I actually follow this reminder? So I had some reminders which were important, that were supposed to serve a purpose, to remind me to do something that, that matters, but I would ignore them anyway. Oh, yeah. So what's the point? Like, let's stop pretending. Let's stop pretending you have a system if you if you actually completely ignore it. I mean, these are the best ones. These are the best tasks. I have many of them, and uh, yeah. I, I I finally need to get get to what you did. I have so many of them. They're really good reminders. Really good stuff exactly. that should be done. Exactly. But like, it's this moment where you're just like every every freaking time you're just like dismiss 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 exactly. and then suddenly um because the, the problem is that this all creates this long priority list um mm -hmm. of, of things that are there and actually are not priority because you're gonna ignore them so and 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 it what happened to me and thanks for sh sharing this today uh what happened to me was the same thing i have really lots of useful reminders that clutter my priority list they make the priority mm -hmm. list very long, 
And then in between these stupid reminders, which I'm going to ignore, but I'm just pretending they are useful, I have really important stuff to do. Right, and very often, it, it, like then my priority list becomes like 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 email, like like when you have important yeah. message from your boss and a newsletter from you know your local cat society, something. So so <laughs> so that's the thing. Um, uh, these um, they are mental clutter. These reminders, you know, you're gonna yes. going to ignore them, but you just haven't made you didn't have the guts to make decision about them, and mm-hmm. and and they uh, really, I mean, they really. Um, uh, stop you from doing the, the important stuff. So, to, so some really focusing on priorities. And they make you feel guilty. Oh yes, and they make you feel so guilty. Yes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so now, now you get it, Michael. Now you understand how I got here. I I created stuff which was useful, but some of this, but some of the stuff, for example, I would ignore anyway. It would make me feel bad, and I w- I wouldn't follow it anyway. It was a. a it had a purpose. That's why I never questioned. I never removed it because it made sense. It served a purpose, but it didn't actually serve it very well. So again, if I'm going to re- ignore this reminder or this whatever anyway, let's stop pretending and just cut it out completely. No guilt, no clutter, no long priority list, or, right? Or, or guilt just once when you remove it and then there is no guilt yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, I, I, I had this, uh, actually removed it some, some time ago, but I, I had this um, this system, this this little reminder um, with Apple reminders because they're, they, they're more sticky. I would get a reminder at 10 p.m. reminding me that, hey, it's 10 p.m. It's kind of getting late-ish. And then another one at uh, 10.45. So the idea was for me to kind of wind down and you know, get to bed at a reasonable time so that I go to sleep at a reasonable time so that I wake up at a reasonable time. Yeah, we the talked problem, about it on the, on the show, actually. We did. And that was a good, useful system. But over time, like, first of all, the need for that um, just went away. I will just learned it. I learned to wake up reasonably early. So it's still important, but it's no longer relevant. And those reminders... After some time, I would just ignore them. Like they, they would be there every day at the same time, such that as with those notifications from activity on Apple Watch, as we talked about last episode, I would just like boop, 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 swipe away, boom, done. But you know, I would just I wouldn't actually give the moment to think about them, what what they're supposed to mean. I would just ignore them, right? That doesn't make make sense. Like why create extra burden, mental burden for yourself if you're going to ignore it? Right. Um, another uh, heuristic I, I, I would use is, um, is this reminder or this task at the right time or the right day or the right frequency? So some of the things I, I, I would do, um, I decided are important enough, are relevant enough, but I don't, have, I don't actually have to do them every week. I can do them every three weeks. I don't have to do them every day. I can do them twice a week, right? Um, and I would also um, notice that I notice I have a bunch of tasks related to uh, to banking and accounting and um, investing, like like a bunch of like stuff that um, that's kind of difficult to get rid of um, completely <laughs> for obvious reasons. But I. I batched them together. So uh, here's one uh, pro tip for Nosby users, a, a, a feature I really love about that we added in, in 3.5, that you can you can set a reminder to happen on the first uh, Friday or the first Sunday of the month, right? Uh-huh. And so, you know, with that, it was easier for me to make something every month but on the right on on the day on 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 Sunday where I'm I'm you know in the flow I'm doing my week review I'm already like you know checking off tasks and and batching things together is is super useful that's another kind of big gtd uh, pro tip like if you have 10 tasks right each of them might t- take you a minute or 2 minutes the whole volume of them is not a lot but but the number of them is great. Like you have 10 individual 
uh, things on the list, right? And so it still feels overwhelming just because of the number of things, even though the volume isn't great. And the context switching between them, if you do them separately, uh, is a lot. But if you batch them together, then it, it's no longer 10 tasks. It's one bigger task. Instead of you know, 10 two-minute tasks, you have one 20-minute task. And it, it's, it becomes actually, oh, that's not a big deal anymore, right? Yeah, I use checklists a lot for that. So for example, yeah. especially when they're related. So I one of my idea for like i already started that, that process of all simplifying nosby but i haven't finished it yet so uh, so your tips will be very useful for me right now but uh, so one of the my ideas was that when i would have like three very relevant tasks uh, i would just bash them into one task and with a, with a checklist you know, so uh, if if mm-hmm. it makes sense, of course, if it's, you know, if they are totally different things, then not. But but this way, it's just one task, so it's not really overwhelming. And then there is just a step by step process. There is a checklist, and the checklist is perfect yeah. for a step by step process in Nosby. So so I would use the checklist, and then this way, um, uh, and this way you get into this cadence of doing things. So when you start the task, you do the first item in the checklist. You are just more inclined. To finish off the checklist, you know, the, the finisher completionist, uh, you know, spirit kicks in and, and the, the dopamine rush of doing something yes. and getting something done. So you still keep doing that instead of the overwhelm of having so many tasks. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I noticed. And in theory, I, I, I knew those things. But but again, like I, I haven't questioned that enough because there was a system, right? There was a system, there, were, there was a bunch of habits, and I, I haven't stopped to, to see if they still make sense or if they're in, kind of structured in, in the right way so that they're actually simple and not overwhelming. Uh, one more thing is um, similar to reminders that you ignore, that you don't actually follow, is um, tracking data that don't actually influence your behavior or decisions, all right? So uh, we talked about uh, the magic spreadsheet. Yeah. And I, I do that and I find that greatly useful and I still do that. But, um, you know, over time I would add things and remove things from it. And, you know, over the last few months I added a, a few things to it. But again, um, I started tracking things that I realized like, wait a second, I'm tracking this thing and there's a reason for it. Like it was important for me because I want to get better at X. But if I'm just like blindly adding stuff to the the spreadsheet and I don't actually analyze the data or I do analyze the the data, but I don't actually influence, you know, I I don't actually take that data to, to change my behavior and change my decisions then the, what's the point, right? You're, you're tracking, you're, you're fooling yourself just like with setting up reminders, but it doesn't actually make any sense. So, so then the, the big question is like, okay, so I, I have X, which I track, but I don't actually, actually ignore. Is it really that important? If it is, um, maybe you, you have to give it more weight to it or change a system so that, you know, it's, it's easier to follow. Or maybe it's actually not not worth tracking anymore, because again, why why track something that's that you don't that actually doesn't influence your 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 decisions? So um, and and with that, I started experimenting with um, different uh, habit tracking methods. So I mentioned that in um, in my magic spreadsheet, I would uh, take note of days where I would actually wake up at 8 a.m. straight and read Kindle in the morning because there was, those are two habits I, I was trying to, to develop. Yeah. And the problem with that and, and, and other habits and also other reminders is that I would track them, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a, a sufficient method for me to remember to do them. Like maybe I would get a notification for a reminder and I would actually ignore it or, or something like that, right? And so I, I decided to to, to, to try a, a different system for that, for tracking those habits that would be both both serve the the reminder need and and track the data so that I can look at it. So I um, right now I'm I'm playing with with an app that's called Productive. 
um, and you know uh, we'll see later how how that that works. But the good thing about having a dedicated app to it that's not just a generic spreadsheet or a generic reminder uh, app is that it will bombard you with notifications until you check it off or you know kind of give up for the day with one of the, those habits and i'm i'm using what what we talked about last week about you know notifications driving my compulsive behavior and uh, me being um you know badges on on the home screen being kind of overwhelming uh, to my advantage here because this is on the home screen this sends notifications you know every few hours until i i, I check it off and it has a badge when it still has you know, daily habits that are not checked off. And so far that, that actually works pretty well, like both in tracking because I actually check it off every day and not forget about it for two days and, and then backfill it and does better reminders for that sort of purpose than the reminders app or Nosby, which will just send you one notification and that's it. Okay, so... Uh, so y- so that, that, that's 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 neat that to use your compulsive behavior to, to a good purpose, yeah. <laughs> to a good service. Um, well, I haven't heard of, of that app. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't checked it out. But th- these are these are like this habit tracking apps, right? Habit creating yeah, yeah, yeah. apps. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll send you the link, and I also put the link to that app uh, in the show notes. Okay, this is kind of counterintuitive to what I would normally do because I I prefer to have the things almost always in one app, so I would keep everything yeah. in Nosby. I know. Same. But but maybe you're right. Maybe for some, you know, things they shouldn't again, they shouldn't clutter our pro- our our priority list, which should be about priority. Yeah. And and maybe they should be somewhere else. And uh, as you said, you know, maybe you just didn't do it. And of course, that, that that's the other thing that I wanted to um mention is that with uh, the magic spreadsheet, I I kind of gave up on it. Uh, yeah, you, you you went too far. I, you, you tracked too much stuff. I tracked too much stuff. Yeah, and I didn't. That, that's why I want to rethink it because I I still find these things, as you said, useful. But because it's just too big of a barrier of entry to actually enter the stuff there, uh, mm-hmm. it's um it's you know I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I, I would just totally you know forget about it. And you have to create. It's it's it was all too much. You know and. And maybe maybe something simpler, maybe some app that just keeps you know tracks of some of your habits. Maybe it is the key. Maybe it's maybe just you know as you said, questioning the fields and the in the in the in the spreadsheet and just putting you know fewer things there uh, makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, so yeah, um, uh, something to think about how to how to you know simplify that because um, I gave I, I kind of gave up on all these things and it's bad because you know it's good. <laughs> yeah. And I think for me, the biggest um, lesson from all of that is even though I have those most fundamental, most important systems to me, which is the the feedback loop, the feedback loop of reviewing um, my life, my work, like all of that stuff every week that we can review. And then um, even more deeply every quarter, there are some things that I haven't stopped to question and I haven't stopped to question them because of this of this fallacy that, um, you know, uh, those things were, were good, right? Mm-hmm. They did serve a purpose. They were important. Like it's it's not like they were bad things. It it's not it's not like us talking about distractions and 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 Twitter where you, where and notifications where you can more 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 immediately see, see how they impact you negatively, but. Those are the the f- things which had a very good purpose, but I just haven't stopped to think. Once again, are they still important? Are they still relevant? Are they done in the right way? Uh, you know, can I do it less frequently? Can I do it in in a way that's that's just better? That takes less time? Can I automate it? Can I delegate it? Like because they were good, I haven't I haven't truly stopped to rethink all of those habits. And all of those systems, and you know, like what one uh, one, one one example um, I will give. I I I got into this habit some time ago of um, every week doing the week, week review. I would look at the calendar 
and I would kind of sketch out um, the plan for the week in the calendar, like block off times like here's work, here's the meetings, um, here's maybe gym, here's week review, and here's other things, right? After work and whatever. But, and it's kind of, um, it's kind of silly because I, I never, even though it's obvious in retrospect, I, I never uh, questioned, considered the fact that um, most of the time it looks exactly the same every week. Like the, the, there's a template, that there is a the rhythm for every week and then there are tweaks on, on top of that, right? And I could have automated that and, and just made all of those things uh, simpler and repeating every week. And then if I need to change it because... I find it useful to get a not notification so that I don't forget about something. Um, I would do it every week. And funny enough, you know what motivated me to finally automate that part? Mm -hmm. The fact that all of the calendar apps on iPad suck. And on the Mac, it wouldn't be a big deal. And I tried to do it on this inferior computer and it wouldn't work. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm forced to automate that. <laughs> 